Hey guys, I am here to do my book haul for August 2020. Um, grab a snack, grab a drink. I feel like this is going to be a long one because I'm not going to break this one up. Because originally, last month, I broke it up into romance and everything else. The everything else is two books. Everything else is romance. So, yeah, I'm sorry if romance is not your thing, but clearly it's it's just a mood and it's happening and I can't stop it. So, yes, I went crazy. Um, most of these came from either um, Books A Million or um, Amazon. Um, one did come from Book Depository, which I'll explain when I get to that one. But yeah, there's there's a lot. So I'm going to do the first, the, the only two that are not romances at the very beginning. And then if you want to leave and be like, Lindsay, I don't like romance, then you can just leave and I'll be like, I'm sorry, enjoy, bye. I, it's a mood, I can't help it. Um, so first off, I will talk about the one that I did end up getting from Book Depository. This took forever and a day to arrive. So this is Kate Dunn, Dangerous Remedy. Um, this actually was in a Illumicrate. I believe. I want to say it was like a couple months ago, but maybe I'm like wrong. But um, I saw it, it sounded really cool, and then I tried to find it. So I ordered it off of Amazon, Amazon cancelled the order on me, and then I tried to look at Books A Million, I tried to look at Barnes and Nobles, and nobody had it. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Why is this book impossible to find? So then I found it on Book Depository, and I ordered it, so here is the little bookmark that came with the book depository order for anyone who is interested. And I realized that this book oops, there goes the is was only printed in the UK. So apparently that's I guess why I couldn't find it here in the US because it wasn't printed here. It was only printed in the UK. So seventeen ninety four Paris seems with a many with the many headed serpent in the reign of terror. Deception, betrayal, heartbreak, and fear flourish. Outcast Camila, a revolutionary daughter, Ida, her runaway lover, and that's why I bought it, Gil, a destroyer, and Alan, an aristocrat, are the battalion of the dead. They choose their family, their future, and they choose to fight to cheat the guillotine of its bloody harvest, even as the blade falls. Their latest mission is a girl possessing dark, disturbing powers hunted by the royalists and revolutionaries. Who is playing who in this treacherous game of science, magic, love, and loss? It sounds really cool. I mean, look at that. It's got like a map, which is pretty awesome. So, oh, this is, okay, so this is her debut novel. And it's the first of three. So hopefully, I guess Book Depository is going to be the one who saves me for the last ones because they don't seem to be printed in the U.S. But that one sounded really cool, so I did snag that one. Me. Here we go. And the last... <laughs> book that's not a romance is The Dark Tide. So this one says, The Witch Queen comes on wings of night. The Witch Queen has your heart's delight. Hold him, hold him, hold him tight. Hide him, hide him out of sight. And the book cover is amazing. Every year on St. Balper's Eve, Caladine's Witch Queen lures a boy back to her palace. An innocent life must be sacrificed on the full moon to keep the island city from sinking. So basically, um, this Alina thinks her girl, her brother is going to be the next one taken, so she enlists the help of a boy named Thomas, who she has a crush on. Um, and then Thomas ends up being chosen as the sacrifice because he tries to help them, and then she's trying to save Thomas. Sounds really good. Definitely looking forward to it. That cover's amazing. And that's it for <laughs> non-romance. So, yeah. Okay, romance. First off. My first hardcover romance. I feel like they don't make hardcover romances that often. But this one sounded really cool, so I couldn't help myself. The Friendship List. So this one is about two fresh two best friends jump-starting their lives in a summer that will change them forever. So there's a single mom. You guys know I'm a little for single moms. Um, and then her best friend, they create a list of challenges to push um, Ellen, the main character, out of her comfort zone. 
The friendship list begins as a way to make others believe they're just fine, but somewhere between wear three-inch heel, three heels and have sex with a gorgeous guy, Ellen and Unity discover that life is meant to be lived with joy and abandonment in a story filled with humor, heartache, and regrettable tattoos. So this might be like women's fiction versus romance. I'm not really sure, but it sounds really good, so I bought it. Okay, next off, we have got... An, an except, Extraordinary Union, a novel of the Civil War. So, historical romances. We're trying this. I have not read one yet. So this is basically about the Civil War. It's about two characters that are both spies for the Union. Um, Ellie, who's a former slave, and then Malcolm, who is a detective for the Secret Service. So, they basically find attraction with each other, but obviously they're spies and it sounds cool and I'm looking forward to it. So there's that one. Uh, the next one is me trying to find more Grace da Grace Draven. Draven? Draven. Um, I have read uh, The Wrath Kings, the first two volume, two books in the series of The Wrath Kings. Um, really loved the first one. The second one was okay, but I really enjoyed the series overall, so I wanted to read more of her, and Shay recommended this series, so I got the first one in the Fallen Empire series, which is Phoenix Unbound. Um, every year, each town is required to send a young woman to be the Empire's capital, her fate to be burned alive for the entertainment of the masses. For the last five years, one small village, Trite, has become the same woman. She sac- Celine? No. Celine's sacrifice protects all the other young women of her village, and her secret to stay alive lies with the magic only she possesses. So. But then they've seen through that lie, and they're trying to sacrifice someone else, and it sounds really cool. Um, the next one that I ended up getting... Get out of their sticker. Is the tourist attraction. This one sounded really cute. Um, I'm really, like, liking the ones where they kind of, like go to some place like wild and exotic kind of like like this one's Alaska. He had a strict no tourist policy until she broke all his rules. When Graham named his diner the tourist trap, he meant it as a joke. Now he's stuck slinging reindeer dogs in an endless parade of resort visitors who couldn't interest him less. Not until the sweet enthusiastic tourist in the corner who blushes every time he looks her way. Two weeks in Alaska isn't just the top list on Zoe's bucket list, it's the whole list. One look at the mountain town of Moose Spring and she's smitten. When an act of kindness brings Zoe into Graham's world, she may find that there's more to the grumpy locale than meets the eye. And this is, I think, like, the, the, the first book in, like, a trilogy or something from the series. So I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to it. Everyone really loved them. And everyone's, like, currently, I've gotten, like, early copies of the next one. And they're really enjoying it because I think it's, like, Christmas. So I'm definitely going to pick that one up. The next one, sadly, Amazon just, like, wrecked this cover. And I'm just, I'm not, I was like, it's okay. I mean, it sucks, but I don't want to try and return it because Amazon right now is a pain in the butt to return. So I'm just kind of dealing with it. So this is one guy, one girl, one week long survivalist competition. What could possibly go wrong? So it's basically them um, taking part in a zombie themed escape room. So it sounds cool. No, wait. Okay, so they both meet at the zombie-themed escape room. There's a local tech company hosting a weekend-long survivalist competition. And um, I think they do it together, and it sounds hilarious, so I grabbed that one. Uh, the next one, obviously, I had to grab was Take a Hint, Danny Brown. This is the second in the, uh, get, uh, the, Danny, in the Brown Sisters trilogy. I re just read Get a, Li Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and I really enjoyed that one. So I definitely wanted to read this one because everyone I've actually, like, who's read the first two have actually said they like the second one first. They like the second one better than the first one. Words, let's see. And I'm really looking forward to this one because everyone seems to really have liked that one. And I really like the first one, so... Yeah. And then the next one I got is Boyfriend Material. This one is wanted one fake boyfriend, practically perfect in every way. <laughs> so it is a, one is a rock star and he 
basically to clean up his image because he has like one issue where he got himself like in the media spotlight he has to find a nice normal relationship and he finds one guy Oliver who is as nice and normal as they come he's a barista and a vegetarian and he's never inspired a moment of scandal in his life perfect boyfriend material Unfortunately, apart from being gay, single, and really, really in need of a date for the big event, they have nothing in common, so they strike a deal to be a publicly friendly fake boyfriend until the dust settles. What could possibly go wrong? I'm sure quite a lot. And then the next ones I've got are the small sizes. So let's just get through the Christine Feehan craziness first. So I read the first book in the Ghostwalker novels, which is basically just... Um, like super soldier type situation where these military guys were all like became super soldiers with telepathic telekinetic type powers and it's them like learning how to deal with these powers and basically finding love I really enjoyed the first one so I got the next couple in the series um, I actually ordered like the next five but um, unfortunately like two of them were like limited release or limited something from Books A Million. So I'm still waiting for two of them to arrive, but these are the one, three that have come in. So the first one is Mind Game. The next one is Predator Game. And then the last one is Night Game, which ironically is a lot bigger than the other two, which I'm not quite sure why. That's very weird, and I don't know if I like that, but it is what it is. And then the last Christine Feehan book I ended up getting was Waterbound, which is the first book in the Sea Haven novels, which is basically like, uh, I think, elementalists? A sea urchin diver in Sea Haven. So yeah, so I think it's elementalists, which sounds cool, and I'm also going to be buddy reading this one with Shay. And then the next ones that I got were uh, some more historicals. I'm trying to try some new historicals, and I've been watching a lot of people who've been doing like historical readathons and stuff like that. And these two were like very high on a lot of people's lists as some of their like favorite ones, so I ended up snagging them both. The first one is uh, Tessa Dare's *Romancing the Duke*, which is the first in the *Castles Ever After* series. As the daughter of a famed author. She grew up on tales of brave knights and fair maidens. She never doubted romance would be in her future, too. The storybook offers endless possibilities. As she grew older, Izzy caught, crossed them off one by one. Now Izzy's giving up on yearning for romance. She'll settle for a roof over her head. When fairy tales are left over for an impoverished 26-year-old woman who's never even been kissed. This one. And then the other one I got was Jennifer Ashley, The Madness of Lord Eisen McKinley? McKinney? So basically... It just sounds really cool. Everyone really liked this one. He is, it's whispered all through London society that Eisen was mad, that he spent his youth in an asylum, that he's not to be trusted, especially with a woman. But of course she finds herself intoxicatedly drawn to the Scottish Lord. So there's that. And the next ones I got were just random ones that I picked up because they sounded cute. That's, that's all it is. Um, well, actually this one was Shay. So it is the just a heartbeat away. She read the second book in this series and she really enjoyed it, but she hadn't read the first one. So I ended up snagging the first one and then the second one I think comes out. It might have already come out. It might be shipped already. I think it's on its way from Amazon. So, plus, animal on the cover. You guys know me. Animal's on the cover. And it's a widowed dad. So, yeah. Uh, the next one I got was Jill Chavez, which is Animal Magnetism. Which is the first in like an animal, animal. Oh, okay. Praise for the Animal Magnetism series. That's what it's called. So this is the first book in that series, um, and it's Sunshine, Ohio. No, Idaho. Sunshine, o Idaho is a small and sunny city, the perfect home for a man and beast. Well, maybe not man. It's a pilot for hired. Brandon discovers when his truck is rear-ended by what appears to be Noah's Ark, the owner of the town's only kennel. Layla has good reason to be attract to be distracted behind the wheel. There are puppies, a piglet, and a, dug a duck in her jeep. <laughs> so it just sounds amazing. 
I, I couldn't help myself. Um, the next one I got is Lexi Blake um, Butterfly ba Bayou, which is, I think, the first in a series. So it's about uh, a nurse practitioner who moves to Louisiana. <laughs> She's greeted by a gator, finds herself in the middle of golf cart wars, and unwillingly adopts a scruffy dog. <laughs> I, I can't. I love it. And then the last two I ended up getting, I saw them both, and I was like, well, yes, please. Puppy love and puppy kisses. I mean, come on. Cute guys with puppies. What, what more could we want? So this is... I'm not sure what part of this, what series this is, but these adorable service puppies are matchmakers in the making. <laughs> I just, I couldn't, I could not. They sounded freaking adorable. So that's it. That's, oh gosh, you guys can't even see the top of that stack. That's everything that I got for the month of August. I really need to slow down in September. There's actually one more book coming, but I really wanted to film this, so I'll just throw it into the September haul. And I'm going to try and behave myself in September. I cannot, like, guarantee that's going to happen, but I'm going to try because I don't have space. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this book haul. I will see you guys later for the next video. Everyone have a very good rest of the day.